Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And in a game as big as Skyrim, it can be quite difficult to grow bored. There always seems to be something to keep you busy and your mind occupied. Be it hunting dragons or starting a family, Skyrim is by no means a dull place. However, nearly seven years after The Elder Scrolls V's initial release, many players may begin to feel like they've done everything they could. They've completed every quest, cleared every dungeon, and are now left to wonder if there's much else. Well, that's what we're here for today. Sit back and relax as we take a look at five more things you probably didn't know you could do in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Part 8. Starting off, bunnies are adorable little creatures that hippity-hop their way across the forests and plains of Skyrim. They're entirely passive animals, unwilling and incapable of hurting even the smallest of flies. They openly flee when approached by a human, but if for whatever reason you wish to hunt one, they can be snuck up on. Well, did you know, in Skyrim's menus, you can actually view a statistic titled Bunnies Slaughtered, which tracks the exact number of rabbits the Dragonborn has murdered to death. Such a statistic is especially noteworthy, as it's so vulgar compared to all the other ones, as other categories simply say things like Daedra killed, Guards killed, etc. But for whatever reason, someone at Bethesda apparently really has it out for bunnies. Next on our list, soul gems are magical yet natural stones used to store the trapped souls of the dead. When filled, soul gems are quite useful at enchanting equipment and recharging enchantments that may begin fading. Typically, these precious rocks can be obtained by purchasing them off of merchants, murdering mages, or found as randomized loot in chests, barrels, and other containers. Well, did you know, the Dragonborn can obtain an absurd supply of them, almost for free, in the dwarven ruins of Blackreach. Here, in this underground ancient city, the player can find strange glowing blue rocks all over the place and amongst them will occasionally be unique ore veins, called geode veins. Geode veins are quite special, as they have a possibility to yield either corundum ore, ebony ore, precious gems and rubies, or soul gems when mined. It's random and a bit of a gamble, but when you find a vein that gives soul gems, you'll be able to mine anything from petty to black soul gems with ease. This can be especially profitable, as when filled, black soul gems can sell at prices up to 750 gold. A pretty decent amount of coin. Interestingly, nobody is really sure what the story behind these geode veins is, and why they only exist here in Blackreach. Perhaps they're another result of Dwemer society. Or maybe they're the very reason the dwarves chose to build Blackreach down here in the first place. Whatever the case, take this opportunity to make a quick buck. For third spot, dragon shouts need no introduction. But I'm gonna give them one anyway. An ancient form of magic used by dragons and a small number of people, the player in Skyrim, having the soul of a dragon, is one of those lucky few humans with the ability to shout for themselves with ease. When used in combat, dragon shouts typically have a cooldown time of about 30 seconds, give or take. However, it's actually possible for the player to bypass the cooldown time entirely and shout continuously without ever being forced to take those necessary breaks. You see, the Amulet of Talos reduces reduces the player's time between shouts by about 20%, and quite a few of these amulets exist throughout Skyrim. You can get them by trading with merchants, finding them near shrines, and some NPCs even randomly spawn with them equipped. Well, if you can acquire 5 of them, because 20% times 5 equals 100%, there is a way to put them all on at once, and their benefits will stack meaning your time between shouts will be reduced by 100%. To do this, simply have a follower and enter dialogue with them at the exact same moment you begin a transformation into beast form. If done right, you'll still have a dialogue menu available with your companion while you're a werewolf. From here, begin trading with this NPC and give them all of your Talos amulets, before equipping them directly from the follower's inventory. If all goes well, this will allow you to equip 5 amulets of Talos, and once you exit beast form, you'll be able to shout without any limitations until you take those amulets off or equip a different one. Likewise, this same method can be used with other types of amulets as well, such as amulets of Zenithar, which reduce prices by 10%. You can imagine at the end of the day, you can get some pretty lovely results with this one. Coming in at number 4, in our last video we touched a bit upon Sild the Warlock, a crazed necromancer living out of Ranveig's Fast, a Nordic ruin near Whiterun, who lures unsuspecting adventurers into his trap, killing them and enslaving their spirits, of which he intends to build an army. When you first visit Ranveig's Fast, you'll be met by many of these ghosts whom you'll have to defeat. 
In order to confront Sild, it seems you have to sort of fall for his trap. You see, in the Nordic Ruin, there's a room with a chest set in front of a word wall, which any rational Dragonborn would love to walk up to and loot and get the new word. However, as you approach the chest, it becomes obvious that below you is a trap door, which you'll fall through, ending up in a cage as Sild watches over you. You'll need to quickly escape by either picking the lock or looting a nearby key and proceeding to put an end to Sild physically. Well, did you know, there's actually an entirely alternate way to tackle this dungeon and kill Sild. In the room with the trap door, if the player instead chooses to go off into a corridor at the side, you'll be blocked by a closed gate, but nearby will be a tucked away lever. Pull it, and then you'll be able to go through the hallway. Eventually, you'll find yourself behind Sild himself, who will be staring at his trap. This will unlock a unique scene and some dialogue, where you can watch as someone falls through the trap and dies on impact, much to Sild's dismay. There. Go get the treasure. Doesn't it look pretty? Well, that's disappointing. This one didn't survive the fall either. No matter. Another one will be along any time now. And finally, last on our list, speaking of traps, all throughout Skyrim, specifically found in Nordic Ruins, the player can find various trap podiums as I like to call them. Podiums that have specific items on top of them that once taken will trigger a pressure mechanism, usually resulting in the player getting bombarded with arrows or some sort of trap triggering. These can get to be quite frustrating, especially because oftentimes it's so obvious that the item you're about to grab is on top of a trap podium and as soon as you do it, you know you're about to get attacked by something. It's such an agonizing feeling. Well, did you know, by placing any item on top of these trap podiums before grabbing the original item you want will cause the pressure mechanism to not trigger. Aside from making you feel like Indiana Jones, simply placing a wheel of cheese on top of one of these podiums before grabbing a key or whatever item it is you're after is an excellent way to avoid all that unnecessary chaos. All in the name of fortune and glory. Fortune and glory. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more things you probably didn't know you could do in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Which of the ones featured on this list do you think will be the most useful or exciting to pull off? Personally, in my opinion, I think it's definitely the one regarding infinite dragon shouts. That's just got so much utility. But no matter, thanks so much for stopping by, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, like ratings are, as always, very much appreciated. Shout out to Patreons Lil Shmuplet and Belcreed for helping me not starve to death. And hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.